Now let's explore image generation. So we have the DAL E model, which is an image generation model that can create original graphical content based on a natural language prompt. The images generated by DALI are original. They are not retrieved from a curated image catalog. It is a neural network based model, not a search system for finding appropriate images. It generates new images based on the data upon which it was trained. And you can use the Azure Open AI resource and the images playground in the AI studio to submit prompts and view the resulting generated images. So, that was a quick intro to Dali. Let's jump over to our images playground. All right, so now we're over in our images playground and I have hit a snag. Hopefully you have not, but my snag is that I have the OpenAI resource deployed in an unsupported region, which is East US 2. And the, my best option here would be to go to East US. So what I'll do is go ahead and create a new resource in the appropriate region. If you don't have this problem, then you know, you should be good to go. All right, so here it is. This is what you're probably seeing if you didn't need to go and create a brand new resource. And from here, we can try it out. So here we have a sample prompt and that's an abstract painting. So I'm going to get creative with my request. I'm going to say generate a hummingbird wearing a Jamaican flag. Now the hummingbird is our national bird in Jamaica. Let's see if Dal E it has ever been to the islands all right well i guess that's as good as it can get so that's not quite what a hummingbird looks like in reality but once again dali is actually generating this so it was trained maybe on what a bird looks like it was trained on what the jamaican flag looks like so it merged them i don't know i didn't train it but the fact is this is pretty good for something that's generating an image from scratch. You'll also see that you have access to the DAL E2 system. And that is by default. Remember that you can always go to the model catalog and see all of the other options of different models that you can have. So while we're focusing on open AI models, there are several models for several different reasons built in and ready for use. So what if I said I wanted DAL-E and there's a DAL-E3 model. That's the one I want. So text the image. And then I'm going to go ahead and run that deployment. And I'll just deploy with the defaults. All right. Now I can open in Playground. And then I switch the deployment to DAL-E3, ran the same prompt, and look at the difference between 2 and 3. So this is more like what I want to see because that looks more like a hummingbird and he's actually, or she is actually wearing the Jamaican flag as opposed to uh, an image of a bird with a long beak, actually with the Jamaican colors, right? So I love this. So Dal E3 clearly is more powerful, but it does have more limits on how we can make requests. Now, as usual, after we look at how it works in the studio, we want to know how to use it programmatically. So if we wanted to integrate DALI into our application, we have to go through either the REST API or an SDK, and it allows us to consume it directly in our application. You can initiate the image generation process by submitting a POST request to the service endpoint alongside the authorization key. The request must contain the following parameters in a JSON body. The prompt, which is what we would have put in in the studio to request the image. N, which represents the number of images to be generated. The size or well, you know, the desired output size of the image that we want. And the quality, which is optional. So if we don't specify quality, then it will default to standard. And the style, which is also optional, if we don't specify that, it will default to vivid. Now, like I said, there are some nuances between the versions of DAL E. So, DAL E3 has limitations, like it can only support n equal one. So, you can only request one image in one API call. The DAL E2 does not immediately return the results of the image. So, the response would actually give you a, what, like a URL that you can poll until the result is ready. So be mindful of that. The results 
will contain a data element with the URL to a PNG file that it generated from the prompt. And the response will also contain a revised prompt. Maybe that would have been used to kind of capture more of what you're asking, especially if your request is a bit vague. So now that we understand some of the intricacies about how we do this integration, let's jump over and write some code. All right, so to build out our DAL E demo, I'm going to use a .NET web app. So you know the ceremony, create your folder, .NET new web app to give us a razor pages app, and then code dot to launch it in Visual Studio Code. Now, once you have Visual Studio Code up, I think you know what to do next. Launch a terminal and go ahead and include your package for azure.ai.openai and don't forget the flag for pre-release. Now, do remember that pre-release means it's still in preview, so there are some nuances. But if we look back at our playground, we can actually view the code for the deployment, right? So of course, I'm at the C-sharp demo, and they start off by letting you know what to use. But once again, in this situation, the code is not quite fully accurate, all right? So yes, the package is good. It does give you a little foundation as to what you can expect, but we're going to write code that's kind of different from this. So in our situation, what we're going to do is similar to previous situations where we did a web app, I'm going to have a form that will accept a prompt. So I'm just going to do some housekeeping transformation here to the text up top. So our title will read Dal E Web Demo. That will be the H1 display and then learn how to generate images in your web app using DAL E. And I'm going to have a div, which is going to start off as a row and then have two columns. So here we have div class equals row and we have call six and call six. So in the first column, which would be to the left, we're going to have a form. And this form is simply going to have a text box for input. And yes, you can add some validation. This was prepared already. So we have that form group. We have, well, first of all, we have the form method equals post. We're not uploading anything, so we don't need an ink type attribute. We have the label, we have the input, we have the span for the validation if necessary. And then we have a submit button that says generate image. So that's in the first column. In the second column, I'm going to have a block of text that says original prompt, which will then show us that prompt that was entered. And then I'm going to have that image. So I'm going to have two variables in the model now. I'm going to have image, URL, and prompt. So let's jump over to the code behind. Once you've replicated at least the structure of this form, feel free to customize it if you wish, but here it is, hit pause, replicate it as you need to. But on the code behind, I have two properties. I have the prompt, so public string prompt. And remember that I'm binding that because it's going to be bound to the text box in the form. And I have the image URL. Now we have the on get. So the next thing that we need is our on post. I am going to be making an asynchronous call. So I'm going to say public async task, I action result on post async. And then in here, as usual, we need to define our endpoint and API key, and then our Azure Open AI client. So uh, I think I pointed this out last time, but just remember that this is Azure Open AI client, whereas in our code example from the playground, it's using Open AI client. So that's one of the obvious differences between what we're writing and what the sample code has. So for this one, just go ahead and control dot and add your missing using statement. Do the same thing for your Azure key credential. And now we have our Azure client. And I think I don't need to go through why this is not the right way to do it, but we're in example mode. So next I'm going to call for an image client. So remember last time we would have used the Azure client to get a chat client. In this case, I'm going to say image client, and I'll just say image client will be equal to, hey, Azure client, can you please get me an image client? There we go. And then this image client needs a name. So we need the name of the deployment. There it is, the deployment name. 
So do remember, once again, that whatever name you have, at least whether it's you're looking at it in the sample or you're looking at it here in the deployment, so you go to deployment itself, but that is the exact name that you need to have. So mine has an extra hyphen, but that's fine. Whatever yours has, make sure you use it. And let me add the using statement for image clients. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and say var image generation, let's say result is equal to, and I'm going to await my image client, which is going to call. And then here you see you have several methods. So you have generate image generate image async, both of those would do the same thing, but you can also do edits. You can get images, but remember with DAL-E, you can only do one at a time, one per request, right? Well, DAL-E three, that is. So I'm just going to keep it simple and do a get image async. Now, what does get image async require? Well, firstly, it requires the prompt. Then it will take some options. So I'm going to say new image generation options, and then inside of these options, I can define the size, the style, the quality, and all of those other options that we saw need to be in the request body. Here, I'm going to define the size specifically. And we do have an enum generated image size. I was seeing if autocomplete would give me our right, generated image size. And we do have some preset sizes that we can request. So I'm just going to go simple and ask for 1024 by 1024 width by height. Nice and simple. So this will perform our API call. So I did say that we could do through the SDK and through REST APIs. And we see that all of these services are really just REST API calls. The SDK just makes it very easy for that serialization and deserialization to happen without our direct involvement. So once I get that image generation result, what I want to do is set that image URL to be equal to image generation result dot value dot. And here you can get back the URI, the bytes and several other bits of information, even the revised prompt. So you know what I'm going to do two things. I'm going to get the URI and that's the URI. So I need it as string so that I can bind it on the UI. But I'm also going to set a property here called revised prompt. And I want to see how exactly the engine revised the prompt for me. So this is a new property. We just go up here and just add that property prop string and revised prompt. All right. I think that's wired up quite well. Oh, and finally, because I'm doing task, I action result. I'm just going to return page. All right, there we go. And on this side, I have the original prompt. And then I'm just going to say, show me as well the revised prompt underneath that. So let's take this for a spin. All right, so we have our simple form and I already have a little error here. So that should say revise prompt. I can update that later on. I'm going to use the same prompt, generate a hummingbird wearing a Jamaica flag and then generate image. All right, so we've got a different image. I like this one. The other one was gangster, but I love this. <laughs> I think this is a very beautiful um, depiction of a hummingbird and the Jamaican colors, of course. Now, the original prompt was simple, generate a hummingbird wearing a Jamaica flag, but then the revised prompt, this should be revised prompt, look at how much more detail was added to it. Wow. So I just want to give you an idea that, yes, you ask for something simple, but the AI is going to go ahead and make it a bit more I'm going to say a bit more complicated so you can capture the true essence of maybe what you're asking for. All right. And then maybe if I was to use this as the prompt, let's see what we would get. All right. So it basically gave me about the same revised prompt, just a few differences in the block of text, but it did some nice enhancements to the image itself. I love that. Wow. Every time I do it, it gets better and better and better. So that is how you can go ahead and integrate DAL-E into a web application or any kind of application for .NET Core. 
And I'm already going crazy in my mind thinking about possible applications of such an engine in an application where you ask persons to upload an image. And if they don't, they can generate one on the fly. Um, you know, it's, it's very powerful. It's a lot of power at your fingertips. So I hope you enjoyed this demo and I can't wait to see what you produce now that you know how to generate images in your application. Thank you.